All right, Captain Mike with Four Ribs Fishing, and I'm here with Tim Ford from Regulator, Regulator Marine. Marine. Yep. Uh, and we are here on hull number one of the 37 Regulator. That's correct. We introduced this boat to the public back in April of 2021. This is hull number one. We're making the rounds throughout the Northeast. We're currently at the Atlantic City Boat Show. Newport, Norwalk, and then Annapolis and five Fort Lauderdale are all coming up over the next three weeks. Put and walk through the boat. 37, we had a huge opening between our 34, which we've been building now for approximately 12 years, and our 41, which we brought out five years ago. So there was definitely a call for something in this area between the 34 and 41, so 37 was a great choice for us. Even though we call it a 37, like all other regulators that we call the offshore series, they include a bracket and uh, their outboard power. Brackets and power, the outboard power, are not included in the overall length of the boat. Coast Guard says anything is actually bolted on technically is not over is not part of the length but it is the overall length our 37 is 37 7 but it's really 43 6. let me just walk you through throw we've done a couple things differently the 37 we made it almost as beamy as our 41 so you have a significant amount of more deck space than people would anticipate on a 37. as we've gone forward though inside safety features we put an inside seat seat in all our boats multiple couples all around usb ports inside safety rails the boat comes standard with the windlass, but not only do we have the windlass on the boat, but inside the anchor locker, you have your control for the windlass, which is also controlled at the helm station, so you have two places to control the system. We also have fresh water hookup. So not only do we have fresh water throughout the boat for washing the deck or just for general use, you have it up here in the anchor as well. Something that's unique on the 37 is we have a bulkhead built halfway back on the boat. So any water that goes into the anchor locker, or anywhere else drains directly overboard. Nothing in the front half of the boat goes back to the bilge. The bilge is always a dry area from here. We have additional rod holders popped in on this boat, pop up clean so when you're fishing, everything's out of the way. What we don't have up right now is a forward sunshade. We offer a forward sunshade on all our center console models. Basically, it stores up underneath the gunnel. It takes less than five minutes to install, five minutes to take down. It's basically on four carbon fiber poles, but it gives you great access and gives you some shade, some way to get out of the sun. Similar to our 41, back where your center, we have a table. It actually rises up to be a table that fits flush in the deck. So this also has a matching cushion. So you can make this as either a sun bed, you can make it a casting platform. It's a matter of how you're gonna use your boat on any given day. So Tim, let me ask you, when it's up in the casting platform, when it's level with the rest of these, you uh, can actually walk right across You could it, walk, it'll hold the or weight. Or you can put the cushion on it and make it a sun bed, or you can raise it up into the table. So it's a three function system. A couple of things unique things we did. If you go to the entertainment package, we've added extra speakers throughout the boat. So you can have up to, uh, come standard with six speakers and about the 10 speakers on the boat. It's actually, this is actually an insulated cooler for large storage. Due to the boat show running sea trucks and else, we keep our extra life jackets in here and we keep the canvas covers in here just to keep it clean throughout, throughout the show. This is a huge setting for, as far as comfort, climbing up. It gives you plenty of room so if you're out running and you want to go offshore, it gives you plenty of room for those one of the most comfortable seats on the boat. Is that an armrest there? It is, you have a built-in armrest. Windshield wiper, open windshield, which you can actually see when we go back to the helm. Down below on this boat is very unique. It's very similar to our 41. What you can also do is you come around port side. We just climb in down below. What you have down below is air conditioning and heat is standard. You have almost, you have a seven foot ceiling. You have a separate head and shower compartment. Hey Tim, how tall are you? Just I'm 5'9". And so people's perspective. You have, you have plenty, Holy cow. Plenty of room up here. Same thing in the shower compartment. You have hot and cold water. Same thing with the head. If I'm 5'9", you have approximately 6 foot 4 for the shower space. Wow. Due to the fact all our boats come with electronics, they're already built in. So you have immediate access if you have to work on any of the equipment. Immediate access to the back of your Garmin electronics. Let me just close the head door. And still have access. Everything's immediate access. Wonderful. You also have your 12 volt panel, your 110 panel, more storage, and more storage if you had to get back to the what we call the brains of the boat. So if we get to what we call my helm, 
My helm is something that's unique to regulator. We've done it with, with Garmin and a, a joint venture with Garmin Yamaha. When we get to the stage of uh, the helm station, my helm is something that can be automatic. When you walk onto a boat, traditionally, you're turning switches, you're turning pumps on and off. We always call the key fob. You push it once and it beeps. Your batteries turn on, your electronics turn on. It's like walking to a car with the fob. You push the fob, everything that's supposed to happen, instead of doing it all manually, is automatically done. Wow. A couple of things we've done unique down below, we'll trade sides with you, is a lot of people say we need more rod storage, we need more rod storage, you never give me enough rod storage. Port and starboard. Yes, it's full for the boat show. That's a six and a half foot opening. That's so for perfect for rods. my big trolling gear. And that's on both the port and the starboard side. So what do we, we could do four on each side? That's correct. With room to spare. Four, six and a half footers. And usually those rods, the butts come off. That's correct. So you have even a little bit more, even if someone wanted a uh, seven foot trolling setup, uh, take the butts off and you got mm -hmm. plenty of room. That's correct. That's wonderful. Out of sight, out of sight. Out Option, of optional entertainment system. Well, we, we purposely did not put in what we call the, um, the, the bunk filler, so you can actually sleep down here. Two people can sleep comfortably. Heat and air conditioning is standard on the boat. There's an optional air conditioning you can get out at the helm station when we go out there later and work at the rest of the boat, but heat and, uh, heat and air conditioning is standard down here. You have a refrigerator, you have a microwave, so you can have, you have functions, you can actually you know, live on the boat, immediate access to all your controls, your, like your 110 panel, your 12-volt panel, your sea keeper, Courtesy lights, all the controls are right here, including the controls to your generator, which is an ONAM generator. Let me take you up to the helm station. One of the first things you'll notice is to step up to the helm. So there's no blind spot when you go to run. Everybody stand up. You have twin Garmin 22 inch displays, multiple cup holders, your fusion stereo system, touch pad control for all your electronics. And this is where you have your My Helm system. Everything can be controlled from here to the station. If I want to control my nav lights, my settings, my spreader lights, everything can be done from this system right here. They're all tied together. And we also, we, we do redundancy. We still have controls if you want to manually control your lights, but everything itself can be from here. Your courtesy lights, all your controls, your um, full garment electronics, your radar, your fish finder, everything can be controlled from this area. The boat comes standard with, it's the only option, but it's only standard, okay? Our Yamaha 425, including Yamaha Helmmaster. Yamaha Helmmaster has the set point, all the controls. The joystick can move the boat in any direction that you're looking for, because all the engines are totally independent. They're not tied to a single steering system. Throttle control, with, 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 when you have the MI Helm, you can single push a button. All engines are done with one throttle. You don't have to do individual throttles as you're going across. We're offering a tower on the 37. We don't have the tower here. Um, our website should have a picture of the tower in about a month and a half from now. Today is September 10th, so sometime in October you should be able to see the tower for the boat. Little unique, our 41 tower could be added at any time where you just undo the bolts and it would bolt right on. The way the 37 is designed, it's either with a tower or without a tower. We're not making an optional tower that can be added after the fact. It's either going to be with the tower or without the tower. Again, you have storage throughout the boat. There are your batteries for the boat. These are standard batteries. There are There is a Sea Keeper on the boat that has its own different charging system, so you have different batteries for that. But a lot of our main, a lot of our competitors are still putting their batteries down in the bills. That's it, those were the house batteries, That's right? That's correct. Cranking batteries are in the rear? No, th this is everything system. When we open up, we go to the back of the helm. Let's come back here for a second. This is something unique this regulator done. You have your mezzanine seating, but this is your access. What I'm showing here is your access is you have access to your optional air conditioner for the helm seat. So you can have an air conditioning all around this helm seat. There is your sea keeper. The sea keeper is a 110 system. It's called the C5. The reason it's a 110 system is due to the size of the hull displacement. Our 31 and 34 uses a 12 volt sea keeper because it's a smaller hull displacement. But due to the size and the weight of the boat, everything has to be done here. But you also notice you have access to all your fuel tanks in here. The boat holds 507 gallons. You have a 275 gallon main tank, and your wing tanks are 116 apiece. 
We mentioned down below hot and cold water. You have 50 gallons of water on the boat. You have 21 yeah, exactly. gallons of diesel on the boat. And they, and they always Standard on the boat is a 9.5 kW generator. If you go to the sea keeper, if you go to the air conditioning, if you go to entertainment system, you have to upgrade to the um, larger generator, and that's all built into the package. Because we don't, the last thing we want to do is underpower or under set the boat up so that you have enough power to run everything that needs to be designed on the boat. So this, I said, this system's a little unique for regulator, but it gives you immediate access. A lot of people said forever, you know, we need more fish box, more fish box, and we don't have enough fish storage. So regulator's done unique with this boat, port and starboard side. We actually built fish boxes right into the deck. These are approximately five and a half foot boxes. They're all insulated. The deck box, you can also add a um, chill plate. So you can have chill plates on the deck box, you can have chill plates on the fish box on the transom, and you still have your two live walls across the transom as well. Now Tim, those chill plates, are they... Um... They're actually installed at the factory. When we actually foam spray the uh, inside the box on this grillage system, it's actually installed as part of the system. So I wouldn't see an, a, an exposed chill plate. It would be up against the fiberglass and then with the spray foam on it. That's, That's great. Mm -hmm. the, the ones that are exposed are got to be impossible to clean. They're, they're impossible. The other thing you've noticed as we're walking around the boat, we're opening hatches, opening up pieces. You don't see any raw fiberglass. Every piece that you can get to as a consumer or as an owner is finished glass. Yep. What we haven't pointed out is on the starboard side, you have a transom walkthrough. You have a, you have a fish door, dive door. This is where the ladder is stored for the dive door. Down inside, we have the Yeti cooler. You have all your uh, filters and controls for your Yamaha. You have your generator. So if you have to work on everything, everything is readily available. What you also notice is the deck down here in the bilge doesn't follow the hull lines. It is a level piece. So if you have to climb in there and work, everything is readily accessible, immediate access. That's where you see your batteries and your battery switches for the sea keeper and the rest of the system. Back again, when you walk on the boat, you have your key fob, push the button once. The sea keeper does not turn on based on the seat, but based on the fob. You have to manually turn that on. Strongly suggest, when you, since it's a 110 system, when you're at the dock and you're thinking you use your sea keeper during the day, fire it up. It takes about 30 to 40 minutes to warm up. Fire it up at the dock. Why waste your batteries going to the system charging and running? Run it on your 110, and then when you're ready to leave the dock, by then the sea keeper should be ready to go. It's a great tip. We've also we all warm up our motors before we leave, and we're maybe rigging some lines, and you know, perfect time to let that baby spin up. And speaking of engine, when you come back in, engine flush system. Yamaha highly recommends when you come back in. You're gonna wash your boat anyway. You get all the salt off. Why would you do the same thing to your outboards? Individual hoses. Put a hose to each one. Flush your engine. Run the system. Get the salt out of the out of the outboard. You're gonna wash your boat. Why wouldn't you treat the inside of the engine the exact same way? I mentioned on the transom you have twin live wells as well as a large fish box. Bait pacifying glue. <laughs> Make them feel calm, calm before thing. they get chased by some yeah, big uh, a very large predatory fish box across the transom. Now, Tim, a uh, chiller plate for this as well? You, or? Can get a, you, get, if you can get a chiller plate for this piece, the piece on the deck, either or or both. It's all part of the system. It's a matter of how you're going to use and fish your boat. Wow, that's great. Uh, either or, that's, that's correct. You configure it exactly how you need it. We have a sure shade off that will basically come out and give you more shade. We have a rocket launcher that can mount on top, or it's a matter of how you want to set your system. But it's like you have plenty of rocket launchers um, on the side of the brother and power for the T top as well. Tim, do you know uh, offhand how many rod holders are on the boat in total? <laughs> a trivia well, question. Actually, this particular one has extra rod holders. We added rod holders to the transom. These are optional. The two that you saw in the bow, those are optional. So it's a matter of how many do you want to try to get on the boat as to how many you're going to get. What you can also do is you can have a straight rod holder or you can do a rod holder combination cup holder. So it's a matter of how you want to do it. But once they're on the boat, they're all the same. It's either a rod holder or a rod holder combination. Earlier today, we were, we were talking about the overall length of the boat is 37 and change, and then it's 43 with the bracket. What we also want to design is the bracket is actually has an extension of the line. If you traditional boat, you put the um, outboard right on the transom. That has two or three issues. The problem is that's the dirtiest water, the most turbulent water. As the water clears the hull, your props are not efficient. They're getting all the dirty and clean water. 
The other problem is you also lose your, a lot of your boats. If you put the trans, um, outboard on a transom, you have to come in three or four feet for an engine well because you have to allow to trip out and just out of the water. And then you have a, normally a two to three foot transom. You just ate up seven feet of your boat. What we've done is all the regulated offshore center consoles are at 24 degree dead rise. The 24 degree dead rise is also built into the bracket. So even though it's a 37 foot boat with a 24 degree dead rise, you have another three feet of bracket. So you actually have 40 feet of running surface. And that 24 degree is tapered. The 24 degree taper stops approximately two inches up from the hull. So as the turbulent water clears the hull, it gets into the bracket. The bracket is tapered up 24 degrees. So that actually helps with the lift. It helps you get out of the water faster, it helps you plane out faster. And the fact that it's tapered and your props are now farther back, your props are approximately five feet from the transom. So now you're getting cleaner water. The water's already broken the hull, it's gotten into the tapered bracket that's actually raised up, and now you have cleaner water going to your props. Your props are your, your engine's more efficient, getting cleaner water, better overall control, more more boat in the water. Many thanks to Tim Ford of Regulator Marine for showing us hull number one of the 37 Regulator. If you like this video, please hit the like button and consider subscribing to my channel. Thank you and tight lines.